no, we talked and what we decided, this was a great time to share, you know, some dyke stories of mm -hmm. front lines, but really focusing on some history of our history, the late eighties, the nineties, um, and what led us to here, um, and, and sharing, yeah, each of our stories of someone, uh, we do have a, looks like a moderation panel. So if somebody's like, Hey, Hey, I, I lived through that and I, I want to share my story. What it was like. in, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, um, it's important. We remember our history and we have, Maybe it's a tough conversation to use in the label dyke lesbian. Um, yeah. <laughs> but let's have that conversation and share our history of why we use them. Um, and I will say after our conversation and getting ready for this, and I highly recommend watching it, is I watched Ahead of the Curve about uh, Franco and Deneuve, Curve magazine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, brought back some memories. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're going to talk today about what it was like. <laughs> so, so yeah, but we also wanted to share our, our own perspective. So I'll let, you know, pass it off. of No, and, and that's exactly, um, I'm grateful to Beth and I, what we, we kind of spoke about, what we wanted this to be was not so much a reframing, but uh, like we want to frame our history. Like we're in charge of our history. We're in charge of our futures. Um, this does circle back around to cannabis <laughs> because mm -hmm. yeah. being a lesbian, being a dyke in your space in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, even now, you know, yeah. if being able to claim that is actually might be a little harder <laughs> now. Yeah. Um, but being able to claim that and being able to see that and then also so being, you know, we, um, you come out, but we also say we, you sometimes you can come out of the green closet as yep. well. So, you know, there's people who don't know that you might smoke or, you know, it's stigmatized, especially if you're a woman of color. It's like, oh, you smell, oh, you do drugs. Like, like, honestly, I didn't dab for the longest because that looks a little crackish. Yeah. I can't just be at a party with all those people in the corner smoking a pipe. Like, that's just not, you know, what you're, you know, I'm a lady. Like, you know, <laughs> so it's just, there are certain things, but then I, we want to talk about connotation, right? Mm -hmm. For yes. this. Yeah. And we want to talk about history. So yeah. Beth, I'm going to, um, Let's. You can pick the year. I didn't. I told Ben she could. She's starting, and I'm finishing. I'm not. You know, I'm not that young either. And so I hope somebody's younger than me in here to give me like newer stuff. To say. Um, but so Beth, what years? Where, where do you want to start? I, I was. You know, late '80s was uh, was when I came uh, when I had my first cannabis experience, um, and I was not out of the closet and I, and that's that's kind of what i wanted to share like you're talking about the green closet and the closet you know you, you did not come out of the closet uh in the late 80s especially and again we'll share our difference i grew up in rural pennsylvania i knew of one woman that came one young girl that came out of the closet in high school and it was her brother that had the basketball team raper in the shower at school and when the principal found out it was her fault for being the way she was, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that was, that's what we, you know, that's why you stayed in the closet. It was like, Whoa, okay. Let me, let me pretend this. And that's with cannabis with me. That's where it was, you know, pretending uh, boyfriends. And so what I would get out of those pretend boyfriends is my cannabis connections. I'm just owning it. I would, you know, do the the pretend and that covered me no nah, man you gotta me. go to do who's the do so right? that you can drive right? to the place i did the same I mean, thing that's the story. Like, nah, i gotta that's be honest story. yeah yeah <laughs> and you you know and then you move yeah. on from boyfriend to boyfriend for a minute i thought yeah. you were talking about what laganja said about being monogamous with cannabis <laughs> yeah. uh, but boyfriends got weed. Thank yeah. you, Beth. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that and that so was it though, too, so. it, right? It, you weren't gonna go to some woman for weed, not in the late eighties. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. And if you did, it was somebody's girlfriend. So it, there was no, not that I knew of, in Pennsylvania. Um, and you know, I, I'm talking rural. Like my first smoking cannabis was in literally a corn cob pipe so i sat with the boys and smoked in a corn cob pipe 
Um, so it was Pennsylvania, Dutch, rural, Amish, cannabis living, um, which again, stay in the closet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of all, them. All male. And then all there's no male. clothes in those closets yep. either, yep. so it's real me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that was, you know, that was, you know, that I'm kind of summarizing, but I just want to give people that might not know the perspective of, you know, that's what it was like back then. And that was, I don't know, that was acceptable. You just knew that you were the outcast, let alone, my goodness, woman of color as well as, as gay. So I'm going to pass it off to you about what was it like? I wasn't your... there. I was still, no, I'm kidding. No, it wasn't in the 80s. But uh, I do um, camp with a lot of women who were. And I've heard, um, I mean, honestly, and I come from a club perspective. Okay. So um, a lot of people, and I, I asked one of my, um, another promoter in Chicago who is very cannabis friendly. Uh, she runs like the Women of Color Camp and a bunch of camping stuff. So she's been around forever doing women's festivals and music festivals and things like that. And she was like, well, honey, all the girls would just walk up to us and assume we had the good weed and then we might overcharge them, but we would always kind of get in for it. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, it depended on what they, what they looked like, but they would be at the parties and people, she said it was kind of interesting because everybody thought they were always holding at the lesbian bars in the 80s. And they were like, they never were. She's like, we were kind of lame. We knew who might have had it, but we were really just there to dance. Dance, yes. So she was like, that is kind of, you know, that stigma is just like, oh, there's, because you know what, you lesbian bar, I don't know, but lesbian yeah. bars in general, yeah. you, there might not be a lot of people of color about women there and yep. that, you know, would just be there hanging out because there were their own, not segregate, but their own actual clubs that people yep. would feel more comfortable with. So if you, yeah. you know, maneuvered over to the north side or if you maneuvered over to the side, other side of the tracks, people said, oh, shit, they hold it. Yeah. <laughs> And also they would be like, she's Pat told me, nah, we never had anything. But sometimes if we were a little tipsy, we might lead them on for a few hours. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, I would have probably done the same. <laughs> well, and everything was very segregated, like you point out. It, the, the, uh, within every subculture, within the subculture, within the subculture, within the subculture. Within the subculture. Mm -hmm. you, you just got further down and down and down the line to where, like you're saying, most of the lesbian bars that most of them that I first walked into, everyone looked like me. I mean, exactly like me. It was the short. You, you, I'm just saying, you know. And <laughs> no, the cute ones, all the cute ones. Is what you're <laughs> well, thank you. They were just people of them back. You know, I missed my time. <laughs> but then you, but then the country bar was only the, you know, and then right. oh, no, and no, like yeah. you said, people of color, absolutely, everything was very Latina, Latinx. I mean, everything was very, very segregated back then. It mm -hmm. was, it was the men. There were no men coming in that bar, and there were right. no women going in the men's bars back. You know, we could even go into the 90s with 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 that of uh, cannabis again. That's where at least in the 90s, I could usually find a gay man. Really? To, so to, it was easier to, to. A little bit in, in Denver. Yeah. And a lot of that, though, really came out of sadly from AIDS and and plant medicine. Right. Trying to to find solutions and, and ease pain. But but it was always cannabis, which was always part of my life. It was always, always you had to figure out, you know, the, the man thing. And then once I got older to avoid, uh, you know, the rape, because um, date rape wasn't really rape back then. Then that's when coming out. But then, then if you came out as a dyke, you got treated like a man. So you want to be a man? I'm going to treat you like a man, right? It's like... <laughs> And I, I was in that those smaller towns. Do you think you grew up in like a smaller town, or it sounds like more rural or more? Well, I grew up rural, but then I ended up in Denver when I was out. Um, what year was that? That was the '90s, so that would have been okay. like you know '93. Uh, actually '95, '96. 90, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was more into the mid and late '90s. Mid late '90s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's 
That's what well, we that's Jill Sobel. I kissed a girl almost. That was like y'all's <laughs> Katy Perry. Like, <laughs> so, it, it was good. It was getting, it was getting good. No, well, and, I mean, and, not good, but like, you know, Ellen was on her way. On her, that's what, that was what was funny. I forgot until I was watching this documentary that, you know, since everybody's out now, um, you know, and, and even out means something different now usually it, it it is very specific to trans or because coming out gay thankfully i guess is no big deal you know but it used to be i mean even ellen rosie o'donnell uh you know all these people that we take for granted were still in the closet or their careers would have been over well and ellen people forget ellen had to rebuild simply because she oh, said yeah, she no, was gay yeah. on her on her show no, yeah. we didn't forget that's why we're so mad yeah yeah, that's, well, exactly, exactly. That's that this little edge. Torture as a whole ass eight extra thirteen years. You were not that funny. But so, so yes, no. I'm sorry. I don't want to offend. No, you. no, it's fine. It's fine. No, I'm talking to the, the fifteen people watching us. Yes. So. <laughs> But no, now that was the other thing though, and I think we still struggle with that now is that when you're in when you use cannabis, when you want to sell cannabis, you know, no matter what you had to do, you had to figure out how you wanted to manipulate. Yeah. Um, you know, so that you either didn't get raped, didn't get beat up, whichever side of the fence the dude was on. Um yeah, I'm so happy that we could go into a dispensary now. <laughs> I'll yeah, take those I mean, fights. <laughs> I mean, and I work at a dispensary, and, you know, I still get that kind of um, pressure. I don't get that kind of pressure. I could call the security guy. Yeah, um, yeah, right? <laughs> but, um, no, you're, no, it's, it's definitely that. And then I remember because I was in, when I was in college, we were doing um, DOMA protests. Mm -hmm. And really, really getting it in for the political side, mm -hmm. I want to say, of gay. And it, it was because I, I think that, yeah, the HIV and AIDS uh, mm -hmm. pandemic and Harvey Milk uh, really taught us or queers a little more about politics. Yep. A little more, a little less about hiding mm -hmm. um, yeah, and more about good. being like, all right, well, I could hide or we can get 78 signatures yeah. you know like i know 78 people at the bar can we just do this real quick you know that's why all of our laws have changed because they figured out it was too damn easy and then we figured them out so <laughs> they once we things got i mean things of you know being queer is political even saying dyke is political and i i still do yeah I'm sorry. I um, actually, uh, just to preface why, you know, I'm okay with this as who I am, whatever. I um, do t say that I'm a glamour dyke. I will build you a bookshelf out of a tree out there, but it's going to be pink. Love so it. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing you can do about that. But, it, you know, but I can build it. Cause That's right. So <laughs> um, <laughs> this is just me. Just so oh, you know. I love that. I love <laughs> Feel that. Free to steal it. I've got all the names for everyone. I'm like, a, I'm like a sorting hat. I am literally a queer. I will give you a name that nobody's ever seen before. It's perfect. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's see. Are we smoking? What are you, you smoking? Because right? I have. Oh started. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm smoking on uh, some local uh, Mount Hood haze. It's like a. Durban poison um oh, mix. Durban poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm smoking Jack Hair, but also Ooh, it's nice. Chicago, so who knows? Okay, can I just say now, and I love Jack Hair, but can I just I know. point out that the plant is feminine and we got all these damn male the names? The plant is feminine. Right. right. And yes. all these damn I names, tell like that 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 all the time. Me. I'm like, my favorite lesbian couple is Jack Hair and Jenny Cush. And everybody's like, what do you mean? You're like, <laughs> It, it is it's shit like that it's like bruce banner my ass it should have been called wonder woman mother um yes Lisa. <laughs> yeah, i thought i told you like three festivals ago you're definitely yeah. a glamour dyke so I just, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn. yeah i Damn. think there's a few i think there's a few glamour dykes in here <laughs> i think a good amount of tokativity <laughs> why do you think i found my trap <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Swing her hammer, put that tent up, and it's gonna look good. We're gonna, honey, good. I can put, yeah. let's put this. I can pitch a tent. 
a few ways. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> where were we? The 90s. Everything oh. was bad. Uh, <laughs> it was tumultuous. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's see. Um, a Wonder Woman as a string. Oh, that would be a good string. Right? Is there a string called Bruce, Wonder Woman? No, I think instead of Bruce Banner, it should be called Wonder Woman. Why are we calling it Bruce Banner? It's not Bruce. Not we should just petition to change that. As soon as someone gets a seed, we'll just change it on go. Leafly. You know, cannabis is so marketed now. We can just change whatever yeah, we there want. you go. There you go. We can do it. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, I want to get us back, <laughs> even though I don't know, more people okay. joined when we got off topic. So. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, let's get back to Wait, I do want to ask because uh -huh. we did say we were going to do this that we yeah, would yeah. ask if anybody had any 70s or 80s cannabis yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, yeah. stories, then you can, um, we would let you tell your story, and that would be awesome. I but I, I, Tiffany was in here, I know hmm. she's got stories. But yeah, we are really open to anybody else sharing what they went through the 80s. We're 90s, open to a lot of 70s. things. Yeah. Yeah. She's the whole Canada. outside in back of that. <laughs> I'm sweating, but she's <laughs> if somebody could talk so I could mute and turn on my air conditioner, that would be great. <laughs> oh yeah, Tiffany, Tiffany join Nita. us. We want to hear one of your 80s yes. and 90s stories. I don't know how to accept you though. Oh, um, it's in the moderation panel. Hold on. There I we go. It. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hey, girl. Hey. Teamwork makes the dream work, Janae. We got this. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. I'm so glad it's you. What's up? <laughs> I'm not high. That's what. <laughs> oh, and no. You guys are all smoking. I, I, and I was not. So, yeah, oh, right on. Hello, everybody. Stories from the 80s and 90s. Oh, my word. Yeah. What was it? What was it like being, you know, uh, the being out there 80s for you? In the 90s, you know, when I was. um uh you know seven we'll go with that <laughs> yeah, so we won't say we won't we won't talk about how long ago that was thank you about the old hair it's all stacked up high today um you know it was an interesting time both for being um you know in the closet and i will admit at that time i was not openly saying oh hey yeah, I, I'm lesbian. Yeah, sure, I'm gay. And I certainly wasn't saying um, I advocate for cannabis either. So it was just secret on top of secret on top of secret. And that was just the, the time by the late um, 80s and early 90s, I was really strongly into to advocacy. And my catalyst was the, um, the LGBT community um, because it was just being hit so hard by HIV and AIDS, and there were so many drugs out there um, being pushed by pharmaceutical companies that really didn't bring any quality of life. And cannabis was being used just widespread for, you know, to really help and alleviate some of the symptoms left over by these drugs. And sometimes just to have a better quality of existence when, you know, you knew you were dying and yes. they'll look down upon you for your sinful act and then look down upon you again because you were a criminal using an illicit drug and asking for people to bring it to you. So we brought it to him. Yeah. We, yeah. we, as openly as we could, we brought it from farm to table. Whoever had it and grew it, and if someone needed it, we'd take it. I mean, but we also stood on the corners in front of bars at midnight giving uh, out condoms as well and talking about uh, safer sexual practice. And you know, we were all around advocates during that time when I think back and I look at like my, my kids who are adults now and I go, they are not as, we were very strong advocates. We used our voices. We mm -hmm. our voices together much. to make yep. definitive change. We really rode on the coattails of those who came before us who made change and allowed me and me to stand um, outside of a bar at night, sometimes by myself, sometimes with a group, being a black person, being able to just, exist all those things we did on the coattails of those who came before yes. us who were advocates yes and i look at my kids and go they don't fight hard enough that i was just because that's my judgment too it is it is and i you know and that's why we wanted to share these stories yeah. because 
you can't stop fighting and it's not easy. It's not a Facebook post, man. Right. It's, it's not an Okay, I'm okay. Oh, yes. okay. Oh, okay. Yes, I know. But people are fighting in ways that, like, I'm sorry, we are saying words that did not exist two years ago. Okay. We are, it is in, in, to uh, so much where Saturday Night Live is saying where everybody is saying them. Your grandmother is saying, well, I don't know, you one of them non-gender binaries or something. You know, whether they understand the vernacular, it's there. So what the progress is different, but it's there. And I don't want to undercut it. And I'm not, I'm a Xenial. And nobody no, even no. believes that. If one more person no, is like older than me. I don't want to undercut it either. But, I don't want to undercut it, I but I do want to underscore it. I want to yeah. underscore that that I, it still stands. I look at the people who I consider to be the youths of, the, of today and say, uh, when I say you didn't, you're not fighting hard enough because it's not good enough. And where we are, it is the year 2021, that we shouldn't be surprised at non-binary. We shouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. at mixed race. We shouldn't be surprised at hardly anything, yet we still are. We're having to create buzzwords and create buzz theory around things for acceptance. It's been too long. Right now, we should be living in acceptance. We should be living in the abundance of what was created before us by people who fought and fought and fought. So that does mean that there's more fighting to be done. Yeah. And yeah, I guess maybe I am old fashioned. I just don't think that fight can be done in posts and text well, messages. Keyboard warriors, besides, yes, uh, I, nobody, I of course. I and where the lines are being fought popular right now. Very, very yeah. popular. No, there is a, there is a full yeah. difference. Right. And maybe, um, I guess if, uh, and we're getting off the point, but <laughs> so I kind of want, I want to streamline it so we get with, finish it up with Beth's st for stories. But what I do think is that that's what we need. I need right. to hear you say this. People right. need to hear you saying these things. They need other people to say these things because you just said you learned from everybody before you. And, you know, I know about True. Stormy Devereaux and I make a, a big yeah. point to tell everybody underneath me that Stonewall was fought because a black butch woman got was getting put in the paddy wagon. and it was like, if y'all don't fight for me after I fought for y'all, then what was this about? And so I make a big point to tell people that. And people I know also, I'm also in a very privileged little bubble, so I can't, you know, people I know know that. But I do tell the the children <laughs> those things and but what i need is that when i'm doing it too there are people who are very um safe in their stations being elders so as far as reaching out or helping or it's five dollars here or ten dollars there or we may not go to this party but here's twenty dollars you know we you know those little things as elders or let me sit you down and tell you this story or i see the way you act and let me come over here i don't get pulled over in the club like i used to <laughs> 10 years ago if i was doing something i'll pull somebody aside like yeah i know you know what i'm talking about but like pull, not even in a club but pulling people aside talking yeah. to them yeah there, i think we need to the three streets yeah. It have to go both ways. I think we were a bit complacent. I know that uh, if I take yeah. myself and my kids, I definitely was more complacent in this safety that and bubble. I love that analogy, that safety yeah. bubble that I created for my children. I was yeah. more complacent in that than my parents were with me to let me know that there was an issue to be fought for. I'm yeah. not saying that it happened in a vacuum. I'm just saying that it is something that I see present and it is a definitely a two way street. We have to be able to foster that in the in the generation that comes after us. But we fought really hard in our right. And I think it was just simply because we had this view of what came before us and that we could have done a little bit better, our generation, to make yes. sure Yes. That that pushed forward to the next one and we would see a different. I mean, I don't really want to blame it. And actually, this gets us back on topic, because if you think about the 90s and you think about DOMA and HRC, lesbians, right. again, were behind uh, gay men for the fight to yep. be married, just like they were behind gay men for health care rights 
and cannabis rights and things like that when it came to the uh, the pandemic with the HIV and AIDS mm-hmm. pandemic. So, of course, we're used to being, you know, the Madison. We're used to being behind. Yeah, settling for Harris behind. And I'm sorry, Maps. I'm so sorry. I should just add you to this. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but, um, I, uh, but so seeing that and knowing that we're behind them in that regard, it does, you know, with HRC, so what were we doing? Like, we were fighting in the 90s for marriage. And were we fighting for our marriages? Because I don't know a whole lot of less. They, you know, Boston marriages have been around for a really long time. But what were we fighting for? What was that like in the 90s, Beth? So when you were fighting for marriage in the 90s, it was also because if your wife was in the hospital dying, you had no right to go visit her. Um, If your wife needed anything, you had no right to even call her your wife. So you were a sister, a best friend or a mother that was homophobic, had more right to make decisions over your wife (laughs) than you did. Um, You know, that's really what came for, for me, you know, it's it's that, you know, marriage really, at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's a piece of paper that's legally binding. It's a contract that affords you equal rights that are health decisions, our living decisions, our wills, are, you know, um, and as far as religion, I honor them all. And that's your own decision, what you want to believe around it. But in this country... I should have the same contractual rights with my wife as anybody else. Um, And I guess, you know, and that's the thing going uh, just to bridge that. I think, you know, my frustration was seeing a Biden. Um, The fact that that man is even still running for office after the things he did and what we lived through that and and the celebration of it. It should have been a we're all freaking settling again Um, that. You know, Harris behind Biden just shows exactly we are right where we've always been. Um, That's where I get frustrated. Like, don't settle. Don't settle. This isn't okay to settle. It's not. And you're going to start seeing, and and there's somebody in here that is brave enough to post um, different social issues that maybe not be popular with those of us that claim to be leftists of the increased spending on police, the increase... Uh, spending on immigration, the increase of all the things we all said we were fighting for, um, are now in office. That's where I get frustrated. Stop settling for this white man system. Stop, stop, stop. (laughs) It's killing us. That's where we got to come together. Gen Z, millennials, Gen X, um, all of us got to come together and say it's a whole new system, man. Yeah. A whole new communal system. Well, and I like think that's what we're doing. Process. Like people and women in cannabis, not anybody, yeah. not, I'm not going to say True. not anybody else, but I that's am going to say that what I've noticed is, especially queer women in cannabis, have gotten very focused. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very yeah, we much. have. <laughs> so, like, oh, okay, look, I get this. You don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to sell it there. I'm going to figure this out. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great for. All of the presentation. I am. I mean, it, I'm hard pressed to meet a woman who starts her business and it's not amazing. So if it, you know, not you, know, but hard pressed. Yeah. But I do think that it really does come back around to this and this being our niche and our time yes. as queer right. women in cannabis with that particular thing. <laughs> yeah, um, we need to support each other, right? Like, mm-hmm. like you're saying sharing our stories and then like you and i talked about because i know we got to end soon and let's share that what what you and i've already talked about is i i want to stay in touch with you and make sure that we're building you into your own business at some point or your own something at some point because you're brilliant and you're you know at this point working for somebody else Let's all come together. Work for like eighteen people, Beth. Yes, you, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Supporting like your success. But yes, exactly. A long time. That's what that's what the elders need to do here. Um, us sisters is is yeah. Share 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 our truths. 
Um, and to have, listen. We need to and hear vice versa, it. right? And then yeah. come together and go, yeah, I may be a little disappointed, but come here, girl. We got we are still taking over the world. Also, together. You're my favorite, and I gotta come yeah. to Denver. <laughs> and, and and I've heard more than once, hey grumpy Gen Xer, you just don't trust anybody, <laughs> <laughs> right? We a little hard well, edge. No, hard but edge. I, I mean, and that's you're right, it's really about yeah. Knowing our history, like if you don't know it, you're doomed to repeat it. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was then a rough once, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, you're once you know it's your family. Like yeah. I'm sorry, your your sisters, your lesbians, your queers, your dykes, yep. your trans, your everybody. everybody. Like everybody is my sister and yep. under the moon. So I'm blessed to have everyone in my life. And our, our community is just growing and growing and growing. We get mm -hmm. to have these conversations of, you know, dyke versus queer or lesbian versus pan or what does it mean? And man, how awesome is that? Rather than, like we said, we would have been in two different bars or we would have been, and you and I would never have crossed paths because of age, because of race, because of many different things within our own community. And now you and I are going to take on the world together with every other woman here, man. Exactly. Stronger <laughs> together. We're going to do it. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Togativity. Yeah, thank, thank you, Beth. Hey, oh. thank you. We're just getting started. You and I, we, we're yeah, going to be talking. We're going to be an example. They should That's be right. Us. That's right. They should, and they will be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <Bob Boo. laughs>